India's logistics network is overburdened. The trucking system is a fragmented industry. Railway infrastructure is inadequate and we suffer from a shortage of warehousing. India spends about 14% of its GDP on logistics, which is higher than global averages. For instance, the number stands at 9% for Europe, 8% in the United States. And yet, despite the high cost, India's performance is low. So today, we're going to discuss how we can make logistics more efficient and apply digital technologies to the highly fragmented, highly unorganized, and highly inefficient trucking industry in particular. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tech at Work. We are in conversation with with Blackbuck, India's largest long-haul trucking platform that uses data science and telematics to improve efficiencies in the trucking system. Rajesh Yabaji, the co-founder and CEO of Blackbuck, is here with us. He's an IT Kharagpur graduate who prior to this was the key member behind the transformation of the tobacco supply chain for ITC. And I am your host, Reema Tindulkar. Uh, Rajesh, thanks so much for joining us on Tech at Work at CNBC TV 18. It's what? It's been about four years since you started Black Buck. Yeah. First, um, you know, tell us how the journey has been. Why did you select the name Black Buck? And uh, what does it aim to do? I think, um, as you rightly, I think, put the headline out that uh, India has massively uh, inefficient systems in terms of costs. We spend about 14 to 15% in logistics. And um, that's what my experience was with my role at ITC. And we were able to do a lot at a small company scale level. And uh, whatever worked out at ITC level, wanted to do that for the country. So we headed out to build the lowest cost transportation network, which can seamlessly help the economy grow. And uh, last four years have been, I think, uh, huge learning years. I think we are still in the formative stages of uh, shaping this story. Of course, we've created huge impact. We work with like uh, 300,000 truckers in the country and uh, help them uh, better their earnings, help clients reduce their costs. I think we've done a lot. But uh, yeah, it's still still the beginning. You said uh, you're catering to three lakh uh, plus truckers right yeah, now. Yeah. So what percentage of the market have you captured? So in India, there are about four million trucks which run on intercity routes. So uh, we work with, as I told you, 300,000 trucks. That's like close to about 10% of the total uh, market size. But what's important is that uh, you know the approach to uh, building this uh, building this network has been for us is two pronged. One is to look at how do you really enable Indian trucks make uh, more kilometers in a month, right? Which is basically, uh, so in India, if you look at why is logistics bottlenecked, I think a big context is infrastructure, a big, big context is how the trucks are operating, right? If you compare with uh, global geographies, the ownership of uh, you know trucking is similar. It's fragmented globally. In China, 80% is independent drivers. In India, less than five trucks do like 80% of the total uh, trucks in India, right? In the US, it's less than 10 doing 80%. In Europe, less than 10 doing 90%. So the fragmentation of supply base is similar globally, right? The reason India, so, so hence the inefficiencies in this space are true for a global freight economy. India is more inefficient because of its infrastructure and the way the entire trade is organized. So it's more a double dip effect, right, for the, for the country. And uh, for us, like as I was telling you, in the entire uh, goal to establish the least cost, you know, transportation infrastructure, which can cater to the nation building and help the nation grow at a very fast pace, uh, you know, we are working in two directions. One is building this entire online marketplace using data sciences and trying to enable an owner do more trips in a month, do more kilometers in a month in the given infrastructure conditions, right? The second business is about partnering in all possible ways in such a way that we reduce the cost of operations, be it electronic fueling, be it like cashless fueling, be it electronic tolling, be it getting credit or, you know, online, all these services which a truck owner needs to operate a business, how can he do that at a lower cost, right? That's the second approach. Now, this is a twin prong approach where you're controlling the inputs and you are also controlling the marketplace in such a way that the costs are at the bare minimum level. So if assuming what Blackbuck is able to deliver to its fleet owners and customers, if we were able to scale this impact, India's logistics cost could be slashed by about two to three percentage points as on today. But for your clients in particular, by how much have you managed about to bring down your costs? Over the last four years, uh, all the large companies which work with us have been able to garner anywhere between 8% and 15% cost reductions by employing digital methods. 
and what about driver's idle time and you said you also want to maximize the number of kilometers yeah, a driver yeah. can drive so so how like if you look at the uh, you know uh, logistics industry and look at the freighting right uh, so essentially there is someone who is uh, consuming these services and there's someone who's providing these services right now because of the asymmetry of the market and because how the market is organized through series of intermediaries the information communication and arbitrage is like you know very high right and if you look at a trucker a trucker in india on an average does 5000 kilometers right and now when you build out a costing that results in the inflated pricing of trucking on the customer side right which is the figures of 14% for the economy right that reflects as a proxy for this now when this underlying asset is sweated more assuming that this truck does 7000 kilometers so any truck with partners with the black buck platform after spending 3 to 4 months the number of kilometers improved by 20% at least right so when that happens what this does is that it spreads the fixed cost over a larger number of kilometers and the cost per kilometer for a shipper goes down right so this is the impact which black buck is essentially trying to seed in the economy and this is scaling and this is like you know growing larger and larger right so uh, so hence to a truck owner when you look at his net earnings they go more than double because a uh, net earnings is a, is something which touches him right 20% improvement in the top line like creates a huge net earnings potential the drivers which partner with us given they're able to drive more kilometers their earnings like close to double right okay so drivers can drive about 20% more kilometers and the total cost savings would be about 8 to 15% right yeah for the for the end customers uh, can you talk a little bit in detail about the kind of technologies you're using to enable this you spoke about telematics you spoke about data science can you talk a bit more about that so basically i think um, uh, like blackbird from a from a technology standpoint like has a stack which can be sort of divided into two parts one is on the access bit right access to technology right uh when we're speaking about these uh, 5 million trucks 4 to 5 million trucks in the country which are the target population for us these guys don't come from cities these this is uh, trucking is a tier 3 phenomena it's not even a tier 2 phenomena most of the trucks we have onboarded are in villages like in haryana if you look at jind ratia fatehabad right these are small small villages namakkal in tamil nadu right salem so these are the villages in which truck owners reside and the drivers are again from these villages right so i think the biggest problem we are trying to solve for is the access to technology in terms of how will these guys get onboarded how will these guys use technology right so uh, when we started in 2015 our fleet owners uh, penetration of smartphone was like about close to 40 to 50% and driver smartphone was i think less than 10% right as we speak i think it driver smartphone penetration is 70% fleet owner smartphone penetration is 100% right uh, so i think the first biggest problem we are solving is that how do you make technology accessible to our truck owners right in terms of beat the apps they use right so the, our applications are built in such a manner that a driver who some of these some of these people cannot even read and write they can use the application it, it comes with a lot of voice enabled commands right so so i think that's the kind of work which is on the uh, entire user experience access to technology perspective right the second work is basically uh, you know around if you look at uh, you know if you look at the problem of trucking right you have such a large dynamic demand right like uh, we have kharif seasons rabi seasons wheat is grown in some seasons rice is grown in some seasons and then the transportation network keeps changing right Month to month like uh, you know season to season and now if you look at it right it's for these small truck owners who need to figure out this network and keep like going to these regions and then lifting these loads right so to sort of you know abstract this out it's a complicated data science problem right but where do how do you collect the data yeah, yeah, because I'm you are just that. accessing yeah, right? you have data so, from 10% of the truck so far which is large enough so any marketplace whenever it like flips more than 6 to 7 percentage kind of a data it has enough data to start making decisions extrapolate exactly right so um so if if you if you look at it the entire areas which we are getting into in terms of solving for this data is all about location intelligence there is basically uh, if you look at google maps right it has solved the entire consumer problems right where is rich carlton in mumbai it you would love you would be able to you know sort of predict that really accurately but where is a warehouse of a unilever where goods needs to get unloaded that data isn't really you know out there so the entire last 3 4 years work for us to really build all these base layers layers like these like if you look at mumbai right mumbai after bhivandi the entry restrictions kick in depending on the time zones trucks can only enter and 
exit at different time periods. That is same for any any city across the country, right? Ability to abstract all this information out because if you put on Google Maps that I'm in uh, Vasai, I need to reach uh, Andheri, it'll show that you reach in two hours, right? But the truck is not allowed at that point in time. How do you do all of this ETA predictions? How do you do this inventory generation? I think these were the fundamental problems of freight, which I think we've gotten into solving, right? Ability to price a transaction real time, basis demand, supply, ability to route a truck into areas where he can get the next load, make more money, right? So Bhivandi today, assuming from here you go to Bangalore, but there's a Bangalore, there's a slump of demand, then this trucker will lose money, right? How do you route him to, let's say, Calcutta today, right, preferentially, so that from Calcutta he's able to route his truck to Delhi and then probably back to, you know, Bhivandi, right? So I think the entire crux is about how do you, can you price a transaction? How can you essentially route a truck to the to get the maximum earnings? What about pricing? You spoke about that. So how much do you charge for that? And is there are you facing any sort of hesitancy from uh, the clients when you try and onboard them? Yeah. So basically, I think um, uh, fortunately, like we are in a B two B world where any inorganic pricing which is unsustainable, uh, customers don't appreciate that. Which means uh, that um, basically, if you uh, you know do a customer do a customer discounting of let's say thirty percent, forty percent, right? Uh, it, that's something which customers don't value as sustainable, right? And most of them really want to understand why are you able to give this cost reduction? Otherwise, I don't buy that, right? So I think this is a little bit uh, you know good thing about B two B that uh, decisions are more rational. No, but is cost a hurdle when you try and onboard clients? Of what you not. charge them? So, so basically, the way the model works is that there is a pricing to the customer, right, and there is a cost paid out to the trucker, and there is a commission which we enjoy in between, right? So the commission, like depending on markets to markets, right, ranges between 10 percentage points to 20 percentage points. So I think when such a high quality service is provided at a reducing cost, right, who would not love it? Okay. So, so far what you are providing is you're providing cost efficiencies by truck route optimization. What else does Black Buck provide and what is on your technology innovation agenda? So basically, I think, uh, you know, as I was speaking about, like, two, uh, two, two broad agenda items for us, right? I think one is to really build out the online freight activity, which essentially makes assets productive, clients' costs go down. The second agenda, which I was discussing with you, was on the entire inclusion of the, the entire trucking community on the online method of working, be it fueling, tolling, right, a tire. But don't you need the support right? of government agencies for yeah, that? Yeah, so, so that's where essentially we have partnered with the, uh, we work with the, uh, you know, NHI, uh, you know, um, officials, right? There are various areas where we partner, we share data, right? Let's say one agenda we work on is that, like, what are the top 100 hot pockets in the country where truck speed on a distance of 100 kilometers is lower than, like, 10, 10 kilometers per hour, right? Which means that that either bridge is broken infrastructure is bad, it is leading to clogging, and there is like so many unproductive hours over there, right? I think these are the kind of agendas we work with with the government and try to like support them with these data points. What this does is that, you know, they improve the infrastructure, right? And the trucks in the country, you know, start moving seamlessly. It creates a uh, nation good, right? I think these are the kind of agendas we are involved in. One large nation agenda we are currently involved in, and we have partnered with uh, two banks over there, one is IDFC, another is Yes Bank, is to drive the national electronic tolling agenda. Government is going to be mandating electronic tolling on 1st of December, right? And I was telling you there are 5 million trucks in the country, right, which are owned by close to about 1.5 million uh, users, right? The services side of the business, right, which is basically about payments and uh, commerce, they can buy stuff and they can like pay stuff, pay for stuff. This business today has already crossed a million downloads, right, which is that two-thirds of the trucking population, right, is on this application. Right? Now, using, using this base, right, we are trying to promote the electronic tolling uh, you know, initiative of the government and trying to see how we can partner and expedite the entire transformation of an online, you know, offline cash-based tolling economy to an online mm -hmm. tolling economy. Because it's not only about online uh, tolling, but it's also about the truck passing at the lowest time period at the toll plazas. Let me talk a bit about the global scene in the trucking. You said it's very fragmented. I started off the discussion by saying that India spends far more on its logistics compared to other you know, nations, whether it's any in the US or in Europe. Uh, I understand part of the problem is infrastructure related, bad roads, something that we cannot control today. 
But what can we copy from what developed nations are doing to improve the efficiency, something that Black Mark is not doing right now? Yeah. So in India today, the, some of the regulations are like, <clears throat> so, uh, like, so still archaic that if a truck which travels from, uh, let's say, it's a truck is registered in Andhra Pradesh, right? And it, let's say it's traveling from Vijayawada to <clears throat> Bangalore. Now, we have national policies which govern transportation. We have state policies which govern transportation. And as per the India's like law of the land and as per the state laws, this national permit truck, which is a Andhra Pradesh registered, cannot do a shipment within Karnataka. Mm. Now, what that does is that if assuming the next load has to be lifted from Mysore, this truck is mandated to go empty. Yeah, which let's say is a not at all an issue in the European Union as well. Right? There are two different countries. We are talking about states here. There are two different countries, but a truck which can go from Poland into Germany can do at least three shipments within Germany. Yeah. Right? So some of these make it makes India structurally weaker on costs. Yeah? I think this is like you know point number one, right? Point number two is that we all know that our trucks are smaller in capacities, right? Slowly the truck, truck sizes and the infrastructure which will cater to larger truck capacities is increasing year on year, right? But if you look at the permit costs, the insurance costs, which are like paid by the larger trucks versus the smaller trucks, and you normalize and create a metric that on a, let's say, per ton capacity of the vehicle, right? Right, because it's a normalized metric you need to look at, right? Per ton cost which you like levy for permit and for uh, policies, right? Insurance. That I think is higher for the higher capacity vehicles, okay. which is which disincentivizes, right, to actually buy larger capacity vehicles, right? So I think some of these policies are some things which are probably really well laid out for countries like the US and uh, Europe. I think uh, if we can, I think this is just probably, uh, you know, a couple of things which we. Uh, which we can do it in pretty much short term. You know, a lot of the technologies that Black Park is currently incorporating in the trucks, like sensors and helping route optimization, is something when once driverless technology comes in, into the trucks as well, uh, would already be there. So then where does it leave Black Park? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, uh, autonomous driving uh, is... Uh, I think, as as you rightly you know put it out, I think it's anybody's guess how many years it's out. That's point number one. Point number two, which but is it's more coming. exciting. Yeah, it's whatever. What, point number two, which is more exciting for me, is that driverless trucking application is going to be faster for intercity trucking, yeah, than consumer because consumer is a much more complicated problem. But if you look at intercity trucking, it's it's more you know, large percentage of time is spent on the highways, which is easier to automate, right, than a city driving, right? So I think uh, what's important is that uh, today, you know, most of the work which we are doing is with respect to demand and supply shaping and optimization, right? And, um, and creating the entire industry structure in such a manner that, uh, you know, we make the industry more and more efficient, more and more rational, right? When autonomous driving, you know, will kick in, right? What what this will do is that this will fasten this process of uh, adoption which we are doing, but rather replace this, right? So today, the entire work which we are doing by collecting data from telematics devices and where the truck is, right, is, is something which you will still do in case of autonomous driving because there is we a truck. We need that data to feed into exactly, the Exactly, because there is a truck and now I need to provide a demand to the truck, right, from a, from a uh, client, right, be it uh, SMB or be it a large shipper, right? Now, this platform becomes more richer in data sources when autonomous driving is going to kick in. Would some of your services be obsolete? Uh, let's uh, say... The model will have to change. Yeah. Let's say when autonomous, like, like let's say today, right, today also, uh, most of the trucks which are sold from the factory have to mandatorily come with a fitted GPS. Correct. Right? So, uh, but at the same time, the telematics business of ours, right, has been growing very fast, right? Now, there are two, two aspects to it, right? One is the telematics business which we are doing is less about hard technology, more about fleet management. Yeah? So, when autonomous driving comes in, it's going to take, take the entire part of more that hard tech piece where we add value, because this is commodity, where we add value is basically in about, if there's a truck, how do I help you manage your fleet better? 
how do i help you understand that data better how do i help you uh, do preventive maintenance how do i help you have an insurance policy which is at low cost because you have done xyz features right so i think that's going to like probably uh, you know be our role and it's going to transform and evolve uh, you know if if you're and asking business me business models always need course, to transform and so rajesh we completely out of time so i want this answer in like two words okay, okay. You've given us your goalpost in terms of the broad mission agenda for Black Buck. Tell me in terms of numbers. You've doubled your revenue so far since 2017, as I understand. What does it stand at? Where do you expect it in the next five years? And your market share, I believe, was eight, ten percent of the trucking industry. Though the trucks which are of the, the trucks which are currently, you know, plying on the road. Um, where can that be in the next five years? Five years, if you're able to do half the trucking in India, I think that's a that's something two, two and a half million would be an aspirational uh, milestone right okay. i think yeah and what about revenues currently and your goal uh revenues uh, probably i would not be able to sort of put that out right but yeah half the trucking in the country is going to be a super awesome number <laughs> because the entire market opportunity is 150 billion dollars 150 billion dollars yes all right thank you rajesh so much for joining in and speaking to tech at work a very interesting conversation lots of perspectives coming in on how india's logistics uh, you know sector particularly the trucking industry is currently placed in india where black box stands the steps it's taking to improve the efficiencies thanks again for watching uh, it's goodbye from me reema tendulkar